Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring, welcome to a very special video because today again after having an amazing lap with chasing supercars, not hypercars but on all the other cars and just smiling and laughing more, you've seen it yesterday in case you haven't seen it, check it out the video first, today we continue with our dear guests Polestar 2 and of course also Joachim who has helped to create magic behind Polestar 2 by setting up the chassis the way it is. And today we're going to dive deep also underneath the car to go more nerdy into the specs to find out what makes it so unbelievably special on the track for just a family EV sedan without trying to talk too much negative. But this is just kind of mind blowing. This shouldn't be working like that. So for people who don't know this car, can you just briefly summarize the key aspects of it? Yeah, I can try. Uh, this is a um, full EV car with dual motors, electrical motors. And we have performance chassis on this one. We have Brembo brakes, four pistons. Mm -hmm. We have special made tires, Continental, mm -hmm. Sport Contact 6, 20 inch. We have a lean stamper, road and track, mm -hmm. manual adjustable. Something we will definitely go more later into detail yes. to find out, which is hidden over there. Yes, and uh, yeah, and <laughs> he has a tow hook. A uh, tow hook, oh, yeah. very important. You <laughs> have yes. to remember that when we try to chase the Ferraris and <laughs> yeah. Porsches, we have a towing hook with us that, at the that's very ring. important. So, like you said, this is a performance chassis, or to say performance pack or performance version, so you can get them in base model, and this is the, the performance model that has slightly more kilowatts. Uh, uh, same power. Same kilowatts, yeah, same yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. So four, what's the main four, difference? 408 horsepower okay. on both dynamic and uh, performance pack. Yeah. The main difference is the golden stuff. Uh -huh. The brake, okay. the springs are a little bit stiffer, mm -hmm. and the roll bar are a half millimeter thicker, and we have golden seat belt and very important yeah stylish accessory but i do must say without making any jokes a lot of people when i was driving it people were making comments that those seat belts look great so the public decides so it's they, they look they do their job yeah yeah so as mentioned yeah the two electric motors brembo uh brembo brakes and Ulin's suspension maybe we can quick look on the interior i only want to say that it's minimalistic uh but very functional what i really liked when i was driving polestar 2 is that you actually don't have the start button you just hop in put engage the gear and drive off and the same with uh with stopping very functional display the um, but yeah i mean interior interior we're talking about performance let's put the car in the lift <laughs> should i lift it up <laughs> let's let's put it up yeah 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 <laughs> The thing with the poster one, uh, poster two here, is that we um, made it just when you drive the car, you should feel a pure feeling of how easy it is to drive. Mm -hmm. The balance between engine, suspension, tires. When you drive it, you should just feel that you're in control mm -hmm. and smile. Yeah, and that's something that we were doing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, in short, about the drivetrain, let's start with that. We have, we have two the electric motors, one on the front, one on the rear. What's the yes. power distribution between them? It depends what the driver do. Mm -hmm. um, we take signals from a steering wheel, mm -hmm. brake pedal, gas pedal, your sensor, and collect all this information. Mm -hmm. And then we distribute the torque mm -hmm. between front and rear. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's quite fantastic. We are up in the north of Sweden, driving on snow ice to make this balance ah. in the car. You should go there. I, will, I yeah. definitely would, would like to try it. But yeah. in terms of power output, they're equal. Uh, so they have both around 200 horsepower each. Yeah. Okay. 204 to be 204. Yeah. yeah. 200. Precise. Yeah. Then well, let's move on to immediately to the most interesting part. First, actually, the brakes. I have to say, well, I have driven multiple EVs and the, thing, the good thing about EVs or hybrid vehicles is that you actually don't need to use mechanical brakes because the majority of street driving braking is being done by regen brakes. So regenerative brakes that are being applied so you can recharge the battery because of that. 
which is great because then you don't need to change the mechanical brakes, you have very low maintenance intervals, you, you, have, you can just continue driving and probably you can drive the car for 10 years and you will not change the brake pads forever, ever. Maybe they get rusted or something. But the thing is, once you start driving performance, you do not have enough braking power with the region brakes. And then the, with other EVs, what you could have seen also on my channel, then you come into trouble that your brakes are actually overheated and they're just gone. That's it. And then you only might have regen, but then regen also overheats the battery, so it's a vicious circle. So then comes Polestar. What made you decide to put actual big mechanical brakes on it from Brembo? And this is without trying to sell this product or anything, but you have seen on my channel all the laps that we were doing not one single lap over the, the course of months that we were doing, continuous laps, was there any brake fading in, involved. Like even with the internal combustion engine cars, these brakes like really perform. And again, we're speaking about some basic family sedan that everyone that needs to appeal to the masses, not only petrol heads. So what made you decide to go with this decision? The brake gives them confidence in a car. So if we have good brakes, you get the confidence in a car mm -hmm. as you had at the track. And then you need to have powerful brakes mm -hmm. because in every kind of situation, when you're driving up the hill somewhere in the Alps or yeah, so we're down not, hills. Exactly. With a trailer. You, with a attached, trailer attached to or something. Hook. You need to have big brakes. Mm -hmm. And on performance chassis, you should have performance brake. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah, and that's what we have. Yeah, it's. I mean, I can, uh, I can only agree, but it is actually weird to think that many performance cars from other brands are being sold as performance cars, and then you do half a lap and you have already brake fading. But explanation is that simple. When you have a performance car, the brakes need to be good. And here, yes. <laughs> there should be no no explanation why. It's, this is how it should be. <laughs> that's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, apart from the brakes, of course, we have also the Ulin's uh, adjustable yeah. suspension yes. on the front and on the back. We can see it a bit better. Should probably maybe even borrow a flashlight because then we can have an even better look. Let's see. How does it work? Does it even work? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it, it works. works. There we go. So over there, the goat Ulin's. How many clicks do we have? When you draw, you had three in the front and four in the rear because uh, adjusted to your driving style. Yeah. But uh, on public road, normal driving, we have a recommendation of eight eight. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can adjust it as you want. But uh, that's my personal recommendation: mm -hmm. eight eight. That gives a good mix between handling mm -hmm. and comfort. And that's eight from closed. From closed. Yeah, so and you it open it up and it becomes softer. And yes, it, uh... it works like a water tap. If you yeah. close it, mm -hmm. tighter. Yeah. Open it. And what's the softer. maximum setting? Uh, it's 22 maximum, mm -hmm. but our recommendation for comfort mode, mm -hmm. it's 18 in the front and 19 in the rear. Mm -hmm. And you can read this in the owner's manual. Mm -hmm. There we have done a recommendation for sport, mo uh, when you drive sport like you do here at the Nibir Ring. Mm -hmm. or normal driving and if you need comfort you can adjust it and rough 20% softer from mm -hmm. a click or 20% stiffer mm -hmm. that's the range of the damper yeah that's nice now uh, similar question to the brakes why would you put such a expensive or sophisticated component on a car like that because if you should make a performance you need to have mm -hmm. exclusive compo components mm -hmm to be, yeah, it should work. And if you, if you put it on a track, you mm -hmm. see it works. It works. And yeah. every click actually does matter. It does, you, it does change the driving dynamic, driving behavior, which comes also with my next question is partially the answer. Many performance cars of nowadays have just active system where you have like different modes, three taps of a button that mm. uh, inside the cabin that you can do a lot easier than putting the car on the lift and going somewhere to adjust them somewhere there on top of yeah. the clicks. Why didn't you go for something like that? In the beginning of this project, we were looking at different uh, dampers. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we work with a lot of different suppliers. But to be honest, this one is the best on the market. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we bought them <laughs> <laughs> and it's did the, the development together with Elins mm -hmm. because we have done a huge job together with Elins. Yeah. We have spent many weeks to create this setup or mm -hmm. tuning, yeah. just tuning the damper. So, yeah, there is no easy way. We yeah. need to have good parts, spend a lot of time behind the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this this is the end result. Yes. And finally, also with the with this, if you're gonna take it out on track, which has shown in yesterday's video that you can and actually you go for it, and you can fine tune it a lot more than with any other po possible conventional active damper system, for example. So again, in the beginning, this might seem as an overkill. But I guess this is, uh, yeah, the, the future and the possibilities are here, definitely. Hmm. Should we talk about the tow hook? That's, that's <laughs> something that you, you've been very proud of, so you can tell us more about it. <laughs> proud, but uh, we have it at least. And you can... Come on, for a potential customer, how much t weight can you tow with it? 1,500 kilos. 1,500 kilos. Yeah. So, you, so it's like... Yeah, you almost, almost you can tow uh, your track car with it. Yeah, <laughs> almost. <laughs> You know, or if you have a lightweight car, of course, this one is slightly over 1600 kilos. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, but no. still 1500 kilo for an EV car. That's, I mean, that's yeah, that's, of course, for a uh, caravan should be, uh, should be fine. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, any other features? Well, first thing that we see here is, of course, flat bottom, which is very beneficial for aerodynamics, uh, for the rolling resistance. Now, something that we haven't really addressed in our yesterday slap. The, um, the, the sophisticated, the better beneficial cooling, will this make eventually its way to the customer cars as an update? Well, put it in this way, we always try to optimize things. We are here, we have mm -hmm. collected a lot, lot of information, and for sure we will use it somehow. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like this very polit political correct answer. Yes. <laughs> but, but we know that, hey, if there is something, some things happen for a reason. So even, even if you're going to get only 50% of we experienced already, it's going to be very good. So, but uh, I'm excited for, so of course, for all the future de development products. And as you could have seen, Polestar 1, now Polestar 2, the future Polestar 3. It's very good, something that I addressed already yesterday and in the past, that whenever people sometimes talk about Polestar, which is now focusing on making EVs, and people are saying like, ah, it used to be a performance brand, but now it's EVs. EV performance, that can kick supercars' ass. Mm. Yeah, think about that. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. There's, uh, there's, of course, lots of other interesting features, but I think this is... The most important things, like I said, that do stand out in such a way that actually in a way doesn't make sense to expect these type of components on such a car which is aimed to the masses and not petrol heads. So what I want to say is if you are a petrol head and you're in the market for an EV sedan, I already said it before, this is something you should get, but now it is confirmed and especially with all the bright future modes in mind. Yeah. Well, Joachim, thank you very much again for creating such an amazing piece of engineering. <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure to go here on the lap. <laughs> New experience. Yeah, That's I, uh, really fun. It, it was good. Yeah, the yeah. next point would be something that we haven't talked in detail. The tires. Yes. We need semi-sticks. Oh yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. So when we have aqua performance on semi-slicks yes. and a good rolling <laughs> resistance. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, but yeah no, that, that, that's the thing. This, this, uh, this is a exactly. car you can use every day. Yeah, but Th this is something that we really do need to address. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting you. This tire was actually specially developed for this car to work with the suspension. And, and you can see here, pole yeah. stand for pool star. Yeah, so this is actually made for work with it in all the conditions, except for snow, of course, but the rain and, uh, and some performance driving, we, could, we still could, could keep up. Uh, but uh, yeah, same mistakes. Same mistakes. Still, for people who want to take it out on track and sign, like digitally, you can have on your on your central screen. You can yeah. when you go to the sport mode, you see off and you do you sign you accept terms and conditions mm -hmm. that you use this tire only on the track. And <laughs> we have to think about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to think about that. <laughs> 
I'm but very... I will not promise anything. Yeah, that... it's, uh, it's fine. PR and legal department can discuss about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. We're start talking nonsense. This means that this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a thing or two. And as mentioned, it speaks for itself. I was really impressed already by the car, but even now, even more. And I hope now you understood also the why. At least now, I, I now I understand why these components are there. Is because people like Joachim are working with the company who are actually thinking in the right way and saying simply, it needs to be there because it makes sense. It needs to be there. Not, we're not going to cut costs. And I wish more people would think this way. And I wish that, and I really hope that this philosophy will continue within the brand. So thank you very much. And thank you. See you next time. Yeah. <laughs>